Hey guys, Rob here from MStore. Today I want to have a look at 40 Mail again and have a look at impersonation rules in a little bit more detail. Um, the other day we went through profiles and policies in uh, a pretty big overview. That's the real heart of configuration. So it's uh, there's a lot of things we didn't cover in detail. If you didn't see that video, it's coming up right now for you to click on. But impersonation rules are a specific feature of 40 mail which allow you to stop phishing requests or well, phishing attacks on your system where someone sends an email externally purporting to be one of your internal users. Um, the domain, the username, um, display name shows up as um, say your CEO or your general manager and, and someone's asking for iTunes gift cards and that kind of thing. This is how we stop that. So it's part of our anti-spam. We go into our impersonation rules and we can set up a profile. So let's set one up now. We'll call it internal. If I can spell internal. And we're going to create a specific rule. Like everything with 40 mail, there's lots of flexibility. So we can set up lots of profiles for different scenarios. We can set up rule match rules and we can also set up exempt rules as well. Let's just keep it simple for now. Let's set up one Rob Hogarth, which is me. And we're going to say my email address is rob at example.com. Okay, we've just created an impersonation rule. Anything that comes into the system that has a display name as part of the email header of Rob Hogarth needs to have this email address. But that's only part of the deal here. This is a display name pattern. So what I've seen and what you've probably seen as well, it's not just Rob Hogarth, it might be Mr. Rob Hogarth. It could be Dr. Rob Hogarth, that's not gonna happen. But if someone might you know, fall for that one potentially. So let's create an actual pattern here. And we're going to use Claire, who's my daughter. Oops, if I can spell her name. She's not trying to send any phishing emails because she's five. But well, let's put in something here and say, Claire has an example.com email as well. Claire Hogarth, with a pattern here, is going to make sure that anything with her name, first name and last name, has to come from Claire at example.com. So you can't get a phishing email from Dr. Claire, Ms. Claire, Mrs. Claire, Claire A. Hogarth, any of those things won't come through because they have to match this email address. So let's create that. Okay. And we can finish off our profile. And now we need to attach it to our anti-spam. So we'll select one of our anti-spam profiles. This is just a default. Under impersonation analysis, internal. Now I've just got a little thing here because I've got no license. Your system might have a license. All right, now we're protected. Now, obviously, that's not going to be perfect. You can spoof display names. You can just spoof from email addresses as well. But this is one of um, many levels that you're going to put together on your 40 email to get an overall result. So this is something I highly recommend you do. If you have any issues, have any questions, want to know more, get in contact with us at Montpiat or at MStore. Uh, we're happy to help. Thanks very much.